Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about the average value of a function. If we have some function and it's continuous on some interval a to b like my picture here, there is going to be some x value, it could be at a, it could be at b, it could be in between, and it could be more than one of the x values in between, where the function hits its average value on this interval. Let's think about how to look at this. If I wanted the exact area underneath my function here, my picture here from a to b, that would be the definite integral from a to b of my f of x dx. That would be the exact area. Think about something else we could do in constructing a rectangle that has this same area. So think about we want our rectangle to be the same width, so I want to just make a rectangle that is the same width from a to b, but I want it to have the same area as this here. So we could make some rectangle, let's say it looks like that. And what I'm saying here is that my rectangle and this curvy amount of area that I have behind it, those are the same area. The formula for the area of this rectangle would be the width times the height, right? Well, the width would just be b minus a, the right side minus the left side. That would be how far across it is. And then I'm saying there's some x value in here that is the height of this rectangle, and that height is going to be f of c. So my rectangle I've constructed here and my definite integral are the same value. So let's see if we can figure out a formula for this f of c, this average value. I think it's pretty easy to solve this equation for f of c, don't you? What would we do to both sides? Well, we'd just divide both sides by b minus a. And our formula for the average value of a function is going to be 1 over b minus a times our definite integral a to b of f of x dx. And you can actually see there are three values in my picture here where my rectangle is the same height as my function, so there can actually be more than one x value in the interval a to b if your function is continuous that takes on that average value. It can happen multiple times. Let's look at an example here. We want to find the average value for this function that I've got, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 2, and we want to find the average value on the interval 0 to 2. Right? So we're sort of we're curving down, then we bend back upward, and then we increase up to this point here, and we want to know, well, it's really hard to tell by looking at it, what is the average value on this interval? So we're going to go ahead and use our formula to do that. So our average value for this function is going to be 1 over b minus a, so in this case it would be 1 over 2 minus 0, because I have a equals 0 and b equals 2 here, that's my interval, times the integral from a to b, so integral from 0 to 2, of my function, which is 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 2, all of that dx, right? Now each of these are power rules, so this antiderivative is not so bad to do. Let's go ahead and do 1 over 2 minus 0, that's just a half, right? And let's do our antiderivative. So the antiderivative of 2x cubed, power rule says the power would go up by 1, we would get x to the 4. We would divide by 4, but I already have a 2 out front, so 2 over 4 would actually simplify to 1 half for that one. Here we have minus 3x squared, so integral power would go up by 1, we'd get x cubed. Dividing by the new power, we would divide by 3, and we already have a 3 out front, so we actually just get x cubed for that one. Minus, think of this as x to the 1, then the power going up by 1 would give us x squared. Divide by the new power would give us, divide by 2, or 1 half. And then what's the antiderivative of 2? Well, that would be 2x, right? So we get plus 2x for this last one. We'll evaluate from 0 to 2 on our interval a to b. Let's go ahead and plug in and do that. So we'll get 1 half times, if we plug in 2, we'll get 2 to the 4, which is 16, divide by 2, that's 8, minus 2 cubed, which would be 8 also, minus if we plug in 2, 2 squared would be 4, and half of that would be 2, so we get minus 2. 2 times 2, if we plug in to 2x, will give us 4 there, so we'll get plus 4. Now minus, when we plug in 0, notice if we plug in 0 to each of these, we're going to get 0 for every single term, so we just get 0 for everything that we plug into there. And what do we get? Well, we get 1 half times 8 minus 8 is 0, right? And then negative 2 plus 4 gives us 2. So it actually turns out 1 half times 2 gives us 1. And this value here is actually our average value of the function on that interval. As you can see, there are two places where we reach 
that y value 